Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So I'm taking some direct inspiration from Matt from Obsessed Garage. He's been doing these Dream Big series where he builds out uh, cars that he's interested in purchasing and just interested in general in the future. Um, and I thought it was a really good idea because I'm a huge advocate of manifestation. I believe if you dream about it, if you obsess about it, if you research it like crazy, and it's something that you think about often, it does happen eventually, whether it's tomorrow, a year, two years, three years from now, it does eventually happen. And um, this is one of those things that I was like, you know, the G80 M3 is kind of creeping into my mindset more than I ever thought ever would. Now that I see them modified and few of my friends have them and as well, obviously seeing them on social media, you know, they're really starting to kind of get into my mind again more than I ever thought. So I thought I would take some inspiration by Matt and simply just build one for you guys of how I would spec my G80 M3 out. So thought it'll be fun, go over the details, explain everything as to why I'm choosing what I'm choosing and uh, kind of give you a little a glimpse as to what I would choose uh, if I were to spec out my G80 M3. So let's go ahead and go to the G80 M3 website, or sorry, the BMW website. And uh, all you gotta do is build your own. So that's where I am right here. And you can see, here's all the options you can choose from, all the models. I never, I don't think I've ever built uh, any of these over here, I've just gone straight to the BMW M area. So these are all the M cars that obviously you can purchase and build out. Uh, the M2, I am sort of liking it more than I thought I would. I still don't like the rear end. I still think that needs a lot of work, but it's not that bad. And starting at 63.2, I think is a hell of a bargain comparing to the other M cars. If you look at like the M8 Coupe, 138 grand. Um, we look at the X5M, 122, X6M, 127, so pretty crazy. And the uh, M2 has the same motor as the M3, the S58, so it's a pretty good bargain. You can get it manual. It's a lot of fun. I heard it's fantastic. I just, I'm still not crazy about the rear end. But either way, let's go ahead and build out a G80 M3. So they start at 76,000, that's their MSRP. And you're greeted with three different models to choose from. So unfortunately, the only option that you're able to get a manual in is the base model. Now for me, it would be a second car. It would be a replacement for the F80. So I would want a manual no matter what. Now I've driven the competition X drive, you know, the ZF eight speed. I've driven that car a lot. So uh, I'm pretty familiar with it. It's a lot of fun. It's fantastic. But to get that engagement in a car, I would need a manual. So unfortunately, I would only have to choose, or I only could choose the base model. The power numbers, you know, 503 in the competition and 473 in the base, I'm not too concerned about that because that is easily um, made up in the aftermarket world. Granted, you have to unlock the uh, ECU to be able to do that, but there's definitely ways to get up to at least 503 and, and beyond that. So I'm not too worried about that. But manual is a must for me, so we're gonna go ahead and design and build out a base M3. All right, so we are greeted with a Alpine white base M3 with nothing on it. MSRP, they start at 76,000. It's a lot for an M3. My fully loaded 2004 E46 M3 was, I believe, 62 or something like that. You know, granted that was, you know, a decently long time ago. It's pretty, pretty insane to see these things at 76,000. And this is for a base. You can easily go into six digits. Well, we might by the time I'm finished with this, but it can easily go into six digits with a uh, uh, X drive competition. So, all right, let's go on to the colors. Now, the individual program is something that I listed here, but I believe depending on the dealer, you can do that. I personally wouldn't for a couple of reasons that we'll go to in a little bit, but for the sake of this video, let's just um, go over the few colors that I am interested in. So there's actually three color families that uh, kind of intrigue me. So let's go over the first, the first one of which is a gray, the gray family. So if you guys know my F80 M3, it's mineral gray metallic, beautiful color, I love it. It's very, very nice. I'm always drawn to gunmetal cars. I've always wanted a uh, gunmetal or gray M3. Uh, and the E46 silver gray metallic was one of my favorites. It just looks good to me. It looks aggressive, but it's not black and it has some color to it. So I'm always drawn to it. But the first color on this option that interests me is Dravit Gray Metallic. It's an absolutely beautiful color in person if you've ever seen this color. It has a lot of bronze, uh, almost gold in it in the sunlight. It's really, really nice. And, and overcast, it looks gray. And then even at night, 
um, it looks um, like a black almost. Really nice, although somewhat similar to my current F80 in the middle of gray. So I'm kind of stray away from that because I would want something a little bit different. Uh, but the second color that really, really interests me and I believe is a pretty, I want to say kind of an underdog. Not many people choose it. And that is actually Skyscraper Gray Metallic. Now, obviously not a big change from Dravid. This configurator, the coloring and, and just the overall picture of the car is not very good. But if you've ever seen Skyscraper Gray, it almost looks silver in person. Uh, it's a beautiful color and paired with uh, some carbon bits and it being lowered and everything. It's it's a really, really nice color. I like it a lot. A little on the boring side, but um, I do think it's an underrated color. A lot of people choose some other ones. Brooklyn Gray being probably one of the most popular. Uh, for some reason, Skyscraper Gray, I just something about it with some carbon fiber bits and it's just being nicely modified. They look pretty darn good. Uh, but let's hop into the two main colors, the two, I guess, more vibrant choices that I am interested in. I'm actually a really big fan of green cars, uh, and that kind of stems back to, I think it was around 2002, 2003. Uh, I used to work at a detail shop, and a 2000 in, I think, two E46 M3 came in to get detailed, and it was Oxford green and metallic with the cinnamon interior. I love that combo. It was one of my favorites, and ever since then, I've been infatuated with green cars. I'm a huge fan of the BRG, the British Racing Green. Um, green cars in general have just always, for whatever reason, I'm just attracted to them. I think they look beautiful. But the Isle of Man green metallic, for, I don't know why. It's just, it's a cool looking color. It's different. And uh, a lot of people did choose this. I believe this was one of the colors that they did uh, or they had on the car when they debuted it. Uh, I believe on the M4 was this Sao Paulo yellow. I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, and on the G80 was the Isle of Man. So it's one of those colors that obviously a lot of people chose because of the kind of debut color. I'm not sure if I would choose it because of that reason, um, but it's definitely up there and it's definitely different for me. But the number one color that I think I would personally choose if I were to spec out my personal G80 M3 is this color here, is Porto Mayo Blue Metallic. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Obviously it doesn't really show much depth or uh, you know, really anything about it in this, you know, configurator here. But if you've seen these in person or if you've seen these, you know, on social media and whatnot, it's a beautiful blue. It's a good mix between dark and light. I think it's it's the perfect shade. And uh, for whatever reason, anytime I see a Portomeo blue metallic G80, I'm just, just drawn to it. I think it looks beautiful. It does remind me a lot of my Lapis Blue STI, although this is a little bit different. It's a little bit lighter than um, Lapis Blue. But overall... I think this is what I would choose. It's a good mix between being kind of subtle, but also you know have some pop to it. And um, so yeah, I would choose Porto Mayo Blue Metallic. That's a $650 option, not bad at all. So let's go ahead and now move over to wheels. So you get a couple different choices. For me, I'm always just gravitating towards darker colored wheels. If you look on my F80, I have black TE37s. If you look on past cars, all the wheels I chose are either gunmetal or black. That's just kind of what I'm you know, most interested in. I'm not a big fan of silver wheels. It obviously can look good, but I just, for whatever reason, like black. Now you can actually choose the uh, competition wheels, the um, M double spoke wheels here. So that is what I would choose. For whatever reason, I just like this look, black on blue, not many people do. There's some other options, you know, you can do like the shadow line or bicolor wheels, whatever they call it. This reminds me a lot of my uh, F80 M3, the uh, 666M wheels. Uh, they're nice, but I just I'm not a big fan of multicolored wheels So I would just no matter what choose the black. I think it's the better option here I just think the black looks better overall. So the interior this is where it gets a little fun now a lot of options to choose from It's pretty uh, nice that BMW still has so many options So there's two ways to do it that I personally like BMWs It's having a really vibrant and bright exterior with a subdued interior or the or vice versa have a really subdued exterior and a really poppy you know, bright interior. However, <laughs> for this one, since I'm able to kind of spec it out the way that I want, uh, I'm actually a big fan of this, the Kailami Orange. Now back in my E46 M3 days, uh, Interlagos Blue on the cinnamon, that color combo, was something I was always attracted to. It just always fetched the most money, you know, it was a competition, 05 or 06. So that color combo just, I don't know, for whatever reason, just spoke to me. So Seeing this kind of combo, the orange on blue, you know, I know it's a little Knicks. I'm not a big uh, NBA fan, but it, it, I don't know. Something about it just really speaks to me. 
Um, the Fiona Red is very, very nice. My buddy had that in his Brooklyn Gray. But the blue on red, for whatever reason, just reminds me of Superman or Spider-Man. It looks a little too, I don't know, Marvel to me. Uh, so I personally, even though the orange is a little bit more vibrant, I still think I would go with the Kailami. Now, this color Tartufo is interesting to me. I know this is a little old man spec, but for whatever reason, I like it. <laughs> and to be honest, I would probably choose it if I was able to choose the carbon buckets. So a little bit of a spoiler of the another option I'm going to choose in a little bit, but you can't choose Tartufo on the carbon buckets. I think this color with the carbon bucket seats would be amazing. But uh, I'm going to stick with my Kailami orange. Ridiculous name, but that's what it's called. I just always like that combo. So the next option or the next thing we're going to select is the trim. Now, no question, 100%. Don't even bother with anything else. Pick the carbon fiber. I think this is the best option, hands down, no question. The other option, the aluminum rhombusical anth anthracite. Not a big fan of it. The only color that is kind of intriguing is the piano black finish. Uh, the only reason why I'm saying that is because on the E46 M3, if you had piano black trim, it was kind of a big deal. It was a very kind of rare option and people always wanted it. But knowing me and the detailing aspect of it, it just leaves fingerprints. You can see dust, it scratches easily. I wouldn't even bother with this. Plus it puts silver on the steering wheel and a little trim around there. Not my cup of tea. I'd much rather just the full carbon. Um, I just think it looks better. It kind of darkens up the interior. It's a popular pick and look how much better the steering wheel looks. Can't really see the full picture here because I'm trying to screen record my face over here so you guys can see something. But, but yeah, carbon fiber, 100%. I think everybody should choose that. Uh, but now let's go on to the options. This is where it starts to get fun. So there's actually two different packages you can choose from. You can choose the parking assistance package. So if you look on here, it's park with greater ease through innovative driving support systems to help you locate parking spots. I don't need that. I can park just fine. So I would not select that. The uh, other option, the executive package, I do think it's worth it. $14.50, so not too bad. Uh, you get a power tailgate, you get the heads up display, heated steering wheel, and the Sensatec dashboard. A little bit nicer. Um, dashboard so i would choose that hearing steering wheel most likely i would just upgrade to the alcantara one but i'd rather have that option heads up display is cool i have it in my f80 and the power tailgate i think is cool it's maybe something that i would take off if it got too expensive it's not 100 percent necessary but personally i'd like to add it to my build 1450 is not too bad so now let's scroll down to the individual options you can choose from so let's kind of go line by line or option by option and discuss here. The M shadow line lights, 100% choose that. There's no question you shouldn't. What that actually does is it blacks out the headlight. If you don't get that, this is all like chrome and silver and just does not look so good. So M shadow line lights, only 300 bucks, 100%. The moon roof. So this is where it comes back to the individual, uh, the individual program. If I were to choose an individual color, um, most likely it would be San Marino blue. I'm a big fan of that blue, but if I were to choose that, it's like 4,500 bucks and I personally prefer the carbon fiber roof. So if I were to get the individual paying $4,500, I would want as much paint as possible. So adding a carbon roof would just literally take away that entire, you know, panel of paint. So I would be forced almost in a way to get the moon roof and I wouldn't want that. Carbon fiber roofs personally, I think are always an option you should select. Uh, on any car that it does have that option for, if you if you can build them out, it's better for resale. And personally, I just like the look um, overall better. So no moon roof for me, it's a zero dollar option if you want that. I get the appeal of it, but it's just not for me. I'd rather the carbon roof. Front ventilated seats, don't have to worry about that because we're moving on to the next one. The M carbon bucket seats, 100% select that, at least for me. Um, I know they don't fit every body type, but for my body structure and what I prefer in a seat, 100%. Now we're coming back to the Tartufo, the brown interior. You can't use that uh, interior color on these seats. That would be amazing though. I think it would look really, really, really nice on the Portimao blue. But 4,500 bucks when you're per when you're kind of specking it out here. Say if you've got your car with the base seats and then down the line you wanted to get these. If you were to go to the forums or marketplace or wherever, and find these uh, out of a wrecked uh, car or whatever, they're going for 12 to I think 18 grand I saw, saw them. So 4,500 bucks is quite the deal. You get the really beautiful carbon back. Uh, and again, it's uh, the whole thing with the resale. This helps tremendously. A lot of people prefer the carbon bucket seats. So 4,500 bucks I think is worth it. And um, 
you know, they just look amazing and they feel amazing. I got a chance to sit in them as well, and they're pretty sweet. Uh, next up, Icon Lights. Same thing here. 100% select this. It's a thousand dollars. So, you know, this is again one of those things. I don't know why it's not selected here. Hold on. All right, there we go. So now we're selected. So if you don't select these, a thousand bucks is a deal. If you were to, you know, get the base laser lights, they're both still uh, laser. So if you got the base laser lights, you know, you didn't option the thousand dollar lights here, and you wanted them after you got your car and you were, you know, enjoying it, um, they are around six grand used on the forums, and definitely way more if you were to get them from the dealer. So a thousand bucks again, resale. People prefer these. The daytime running light just looks much nicer. If you uh, look on the base headlights, it doesn't have this section here, so it's just the bottom part. It looks a little goofy in my opinion. So a thousand bucks for that, hundred percent, no question. The drive recorder, I, I think I don't even know what that is to be honest. Uh, keep track of the recorded video surrounding. Oh, so it's basically like a um, dash cam. I don't really care for that. So it's a hundred bucks. Ah, no, I don't need that. That's just something else to break. I don't need that. So the next option is the M Carbon Exterior Package. For me, I'd rather pay for this than an individual paint. So a couple things you get with this package. You get a carbon rear spoiler. You get um, mirror caps. You also get a diffuser and the front inlets as well. So again, it's one of those things that just adds value to it. More than 4700 bucks, in my opinion, for resale. And uh, if you were to piece these things out individually after you were to buy your car and put them on yourself, it's way more than that. So having OEM carbon fiber parts on the car already, I think is worth it. Extended shadow line trim. Uh, if I wasn't getting the carbon exterior pack, uh, I would probably get this. Although I'm not a big fan of the black spoiler. I don't think that looks good. I think paint matched or carbon is the best. Uh, this next option, M uh, Drive Professional. I don't know if many people really um, option this basically it's like a drift analyzer a lap timer I, even even like the diehard track people I don't think are optioning this out because they want a stripper spec they don't want anything on the car so even at 900 bucks I don't think it's worth it I think it's a little bit more gimmicky than anything so uh, I'm gonna pass on that now here comes the area or the option that kind of drives this price <laughs> way up so for most scenarios, actually 100% of my, you know, scenarios that I would be driving this car in, the steel brakes are totally fine. I'd probably choose the red just to get a little bit more pop behind the wheel, behind the black wheels. But if I were to spec out my ideal G80 M3, I would go for the carbon ceramics. And honestly, I would just get them because of the cleanliness of them. They don't create brake dust and I personally like the gold color better looks good behind the black wheels the M carbon brakes I think it's worth it even for me as somebody that likes their cars clean just so I don't have to deal with brake dust and uh, I just think they look better I know it's a pretty pricey um, option here but you know 8500 bucks for carbon brakes again it's one of those things if you were to get carbon brakes you know after you bought the car you're looking at you know a lot more than that you're looking at you know 15 20 grand to to kind of do even the oem ones aftermarket like brembo or something even if they have them is a lot more so carbon brakes definitely for me if i were to spec it out um yeah these options this is if you just have the steel ones the m drivers package 2500 bucks uh this is uh, oh includes the one day at the performance center so Unfortunately, they don't do the Euro delivery anymore. That's something that I've always wanted to do. So basically, you pay for um, you know the Euro delivery, so you get to go over to Germany and see your car at the BMW factory, which is amazing. And then you get to drive on the BMW roads and you make a trip out of it. It's actually cheaper to do it this way, or the Euro delivery, than go on a vacation and all that and book all the hotels and all that stuff. Unfortunately, stopped that uh, around COVID, and they haven't brought it back. So I wish they would. Uh, it would be amazing to do that and you know experience all that. But um, all they offer is the M Drivers Package, which is uh, performance center delivery. <laughs> I mean, I thought about it. I was thinking maybe it would be fun. But honestly, I would just want to get my car and go home and play with it and start modifying it. <laughs> so I don't think that $2,500 is worth it to me. Uh, if we go down here, the vehicle maintenance program. Uh, I don't know. This is something that I'd probably decide on. Probably not. I mean, you know me. I'd modify the car. You get three years, 36,000 miles uh, of, of warranty. 
right away, which is crazy. It used to be four years 50, I think. So they changed that. That's interesting. Um, if anything, maybe I'll do like uh, this, which you get additional cover. Yeah, 450. So 2,700 bucks add into that. It's not the end of the world. Um, and I believe you can add this stuff after your warranty is up or you're able to work out a deal to do that. But again, I, I would go home and modify the car pretty much the exact same day I brought it home. So I wouldn't be too worried about it, but I'd maybe consider this one. But for the sake of this, I think I'm going to pass. So here we go. Here is my ideal spec G80 M3. We got the Portimao blue. Hold on, let's go down to the little specs down here. We got the Portimao blue with the black double spoke wheels, the Kayalami orange extended Mario leather. Also, I forgot to go over this. You can go with the extended or the full leather. Full leather, you actually get it on the glove box area and you get the uh, leather dash. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the extra orange, so just the extended is fine. I have extended in my F80 and plenty. If I were to go with the black interior, I probably would go with the, uh, the full interior because um, kind of all matches and you get the nicer dash. But the extended is fine for me and it's no dollars, zero dollars, so I would go with that. We got the $950 carbon fiber trim and then this, the, all the options here is what kind of drives the entire price up. We got the carbon ceramics, the uh, laser lights, carbon buckets, carbon exterior pack, and the M shadow line lights. Destination and handling, 995, and we're looking at 98,895. Now, I'm not really sure of what dealers are doing at this point in terms of MSRP and all that, but um, I'd probably be able to find one, to be honest. I don't think it's as hard as it used to be. So uh, getting it at MSRP may be a little bit easier. I don't know if you can get them in under MSRP anymore. That would be that'd be tough, but I wouldn't pay over. So 98, 895 is what I'd be looking at. Pretty expensive if you ask me for an M3. And to be honest, if I reached over 100, uh, which obviously with tax and all that would be, um, I'd probably be leaning towards going to the Porsche route. But if I wanted the G80 M3 and I wanted to spec it out my exact way, this is exactly what I would do. Um, even, even if I change the color to the Isle of Man, I would still have the same interior color. I love it for whatever reason, same brakes and all that same color wheels, but this is what I would do. Come home immediately, start modifying it, lowering it, put a new grill on, a lip, exhaust, probably tune it. <laughs> but I mean, again, this is not something I'm going to do right now, but it's definitely something I would like to manifest and possibly get into in the future. I really did in, or do enjoy my time driving my friends. Uh, and I actually have a, another friend. He has a base M3, base G80, in Isle of Man in manual. And he's actually um, handing it over for a week uh, next month in March. So I'm going to get some time with that and actually drive it because I really wanted to drive a manual G80 and um, see what that's all about. It may completely change my mind and make me want one really bad because all I've driven is the automatic so far, the competition, which is great. But um, again, I need that manual transmission. So uh, 98 in 95, pretty expensive for an M3. My uh, MSRP on my F80 was 75, and that's a 2018 competition. Pretty much fully loaded. The only thing it doesn't have are the carbon brakes, and I think that's it. Maybe, oh, it doesn't have the full, um, full interior, full leather interior. Otherwise, it has pretty much everything. So 75, uh, and now we're looking at over 100 grand for an M3. Pretty crazy, but that's just what it is these days, and uh, people pay it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my ideal spec G80 M3. So maybe one day this will come to fruition, and we will be doing this. Um, but who knows? Honestly, I still don't like this whole um, screen here. I'd much rather the separate dashes that are in the 21 and 22s. So maybe I would look for a very, very lightly used one, 22, with this same spec if I can find it. So I may do more of these in the future. Um, again, I'm a big fan of manifestation, and I'm always playing around with these configurators. You know, if it's a BMW or Porsche or anything else, I'm just always playing around in them. If you guys are interested in seeing some other cars, uh, how I would spec them out, let me know. I thought this was fun, kind of break up uh, the garage videos for a little bit. We're going to get back to the M3. I got a lot of mods, a lot of mods pending and waiting to go on, so... We're going to be doing those very soon and kind of getting back into things. But the garage build is coming along. We're going to be finishing that up in the next uh, week or two. We're going to really start getting things together now that the construction part is over. So that's exciting. I'm really looking forward to finally getting my hands on it and getting the place back together. I got stuff everywhere. It's driving me nuts. 
But uh, I promise we're going to get back to car videos and modifications and driving and having fun. You know, the warmer weather is around the corner, so um, we're going to be enjoying that car. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. So let me know in the comments below. Did you guys like this type of video? A little different. I thought it was fun. Uh, I can do more if you would like. And you, know, you can let me know which cars. And um, we, can have, we can do more of these videos if you guys want. But as for this one, that's going to be it. If you have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.